darlings, it's me, Mrs. Kasha Davis, and my friend, Wednesday Westwood. And here we are, coming to you live from suburbia. Now, Wednesday, I am so excited that you're here, because number one, I think you're absolutely fantastic in many ways. He's Wednesday Westwood. If you don't know Wednesday Westwood on Instagram, you will now. So, the thing of it is, it's sort of like old school and new school here, right? Mm hmm Yeah. You know, we've been working together and having the opportunity to learn from one another, and I have had this fantasy, after looking at all of your work, to see if there was any possibility that would you, you could do something with this face. Mm -hmm. That you could do, well, not so much, you know, the, the reality of the face, but what you do with your makeup and all of this. So, uh, so, are you willing to do some sort of a makeover for this old gal? I will accept your challenge. <laughs> Be, this is totally not your color, but I'm not always concerned with matching it perfectly because in the end it will come together and match is fine. Well, so that being said, like we talked a little bit about that. You find like the colors you can kind of experiment more with for photography versus on the stage? No, I, I feel it. Or is it the least, same? It's pretty much the same, yeah. Because if um, cause, yeah. I mean, let's face it, everybody does a little filtering. Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So you can change colors a little bit, but not that dramatically. You know? Right. Yeah, and my, my general rule of thumb and principle for myself is like I want to have to do as little t retouching as possible, so I try to get the makeup as perfect as possible at, you know, in real in real life. Mm -hmm. IRL, as they say. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I like to do as minimal touching on my face as possible when it comes to photos. It's funny, when I was on Drag Race, uh, people would be like, you know, you're criticizing, you know, the, the, the younger generation, or, or this, that, and the other. And it's, it's not even so much the, uh, the, the criticism that, that I'm saying is, it's like, there's no wrong drag, you right. know? Yeah. I try to, Look up, open your I try to um, say that, and it obviously doesn't always come out. Exactly. Uh, people misinterpret you. Misinterpret it, you know? Because, like we were saying, like, it could be purposely busted. It could be... And and all of it is good. That's what's so amazing about drag, is mm -hmm. that there's not one right way to do things. Exactly. I bought this at what was called the Gothic Garage Sale. Right. And these kids were selling, like, these two gay boys were selling uh, a bunch of Mac products, like, used Mac products they had. And I found this. Mac matte black eyeshadow, huge container. I've never seen it anywhere in my life, and I've had this for like five well, years. Well, yeah, that's the best. Yeah, black okay. eyeshadow is one of the hardest things yes. to find. That's the point I want to make as I'm doing this. If you're gonna use a black, if you you want when you're doing your makeup, especially for drag, you want your blacks to stay black. And this is why whenever I use this gel liner, I'm about to in a minute go back in and set it with this matte black, not shimmery, because the shimmery tends to make sh things look. Uh, kind of muddy, or like if it's too shimmery, it'll look gray and like messy, especially when it's going over, if it's going over your like glued down eyebrows. So you don't want shimmer on there. Matte black, keep your blacks black. So, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start the first, the top of the face with the foundation and the nose. So, if I get any fallout, especially from this really uh, heavy duty black matte eyeshadow, uh, it's not gonna destroy my foundation. Right. So, I'll go back and do that later. Do you do that with all of your looks? Yep. Always. So your process is that. So I find that interesting because what I've learned, and, what, and I may try your technique, but what I learned was to do like a lighter color powder underneath your eye. That works too. Like set a lot of A lot of it. Yep. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you're of an older age and you have some, you know, starting of some wrinkles under there, the excessive powder can start to look like exaggerate the wrinkles. Right. Yeah, totally. So if you want that fresher look, you might want to take Wednesday's suggestion as to what she's doing here. I think, yeah, I think Bianca does it this way as well. I think so. So what I've done, I, I worked a little bit in the eyes and then I started her nose contour. And with a nose contour, I love using a cooler. Like I, nothing more I hate more than seeing a nose contour with like a really, it looks like they use bronzer to contour the nose. Something cool because we're creating a shadow. Mm -hmm. Shadows are generally cool. So I brushed in uh, with a nice cool taupey color on each side and I refined it with a smaller brush to really get that pinched look. And then I go in with a translucent powder over top of that to kind of dull in it. 
Right. Is that a word? Yeah, one well, Soften word today. Doll. Soften it. There we go. So it's interesting how some people will talk about when they ask you for advice on, on doing their face and they say they've tried and, you know, the answer is always, we all have to keep practicing and practicing and trying new things. It's Because it's not a flat surface. Even if that involves sitting in your house alone, messing around, experimenting with makeup that no one's going to see, keep do that all the time. That's why I started. Yeah, and I mean, like, trying new things, experimenting with new things, and getting to know your face. So yeah, I didn't even explain to you, but I got some uh, glitter gel, glitter primer, what have you. Right. And I took this flat brush and just brush it on and I scoop it up and pat it on. Does it like dry like a lash adhesive or does it stay like... No, it's pretty... it moves. Because uh -huh. I've actually tried lash adhesive like clear to glue down glitter and it, it does weird things. It feels like your lids are sticking to themselves and... So, if I were to use that product and I'm performing, would I have to reapply during nope, the show? Nope, I, I, I keep this on all night. And I know a lot of people would, or wouldn't be crazy about this idea, but I like the old-fashioned method of when I'm done with the makeup, mist it with hairspray. Especially the glitter, it keeps, mm -hmm. it keeps it in place. I never have to touch up my glitter. See, I like to try to like contour like suspiciously dark under the chin to get rid of the, the double chin effect. And I don't really notice like when I see you perform or whatever, I don't notice that. Like, so you don't notice exactly how dark it really is? No. Okay. It's perfect. Perfect. It's called illusion. <laughs> that is. <here. laughs> and like with my nostrils, I like to, because I like that nice pinched nose look, so to further, further that illusion, I like to basically erase my nostrils. And what I'll do is match whatever you know you can apply this to however how, however you do your makeup match the color of your nostril to whatever color is over here so i'm going to just take this white and blend it right there and kind of buff out that white that way and this is what i call erasing the nostrils because it should ideally blend right into whatever color is out on the outside of the nostril and oftentimes how that will show up in photos or in person from afar in a dark lit club is a smaller, more petite nose. Wine break! There's always time for a Oh, cocktail. Steven! Mr. Davis! <laughs> glug, 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 glug. Oh, what kind of person does this make me? She's a recovered alcoholic. I'm just like guzzling this down right in front of her. Fine. I know, she's, Listen, cool. We she's cool with that. Well, we work in nightclubs, you know? It is what it is. For me, it's something that I knew right at the beginning of yep. recovery that it was like, well, well I'm always recovering. So when I went to rehab do. and everything, I said it was something that I knew I had to be around. And uh, it was something that I had to be able to be okay with. Was that anywhere I wasn't going to perform. Did anyone ever push you to be like, well, you can't be in this, this kind of environment if you want to not drink? Yeah, some people yeah. can't. Yeah. Um, but I knew at the beginning, I was like, I'm not giving up on this. So I'm going to need to be okay with it. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, I may partake in the partying and drinking once in a while, but... So I question, I question it myself, like, should I back up? Should I stop? Because I see you doing it. I'm like, you can only do yourself good, you know, by not drinking. Well, everybody's their own individual. Exactly. You know what I mean? And the thing of it is, just because... The worst thing is, like, uh, someone quit, somebody quits smoking and then they hate smokers. Yeah, you, you never... I never see you doing you know, that. You don't want to... I don't want to be that do person. their own thing and... Yeah. And everybody's got their own journey. And just because somebody gets drunk doesn't mean they're an alcoholic. Right. And like I said earlier, you want your blacks to be black. And you want your whites to be white. So I'm going in with these, um... I guess you could call them faux tear ducts, corner of your eyes, whatever you want to call them. The white part of her eye. Um, I went in with a white pencil and set it with a white powder, and now I'm going over it with a NYX liquid white eyeliner. And it really makes that white pop. So we're just about ready to go on to lips. We've got some eyebrows, though, don't we? Mm, we're trucking along. We're trucking along. Trucking along. I feel like I'm doing a trucker's makeup. Oh. Oh, 
was your favorite Halloween costume? When? Like growing up or something? Growing up. Hmm. Well, I can't remember a favorite, but I do have a memory of um, one Halloween when I was really young. I had to be like five or something, somewhere around there. And my mom let me be a witch. However, when it was time to put on the ugly, big, ugly witch nose, I threw the biggest tantrum ever. I'm like, I'm not wearing this ugly nose. It's too ugly. I just want a long, pretty black wig. Aww. Big tantrum. I threw in the garbage. <laughs> my poor mom. Aww. So then what did you do? You don't know. I don't remember what happened. I probably ended up, I think I ended up wearing the, the nose. And there were some photographs of me being like, Right. Miserable, because I had to wear an ugly witch nose. So I wanted to be a pretty witch. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. Think it's funny? So, sometimes I have to trim lashes down yes. because of my basic, smaller eyes that I do. Mm -hmm. I say basic, like it's an like some people think it's an insult, but well, I'm just saying my basic eye. And so, but I'll have to cut them down. But when you do this big, darker... Lash, um, kind of lash line, you can use them higher on the outside. Them higher and you can use the whole lash. And it will just blend right into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you follow your natural lash line when you put your lashes on? Close. Yeah, very close. And that's why I trim them so they don't go right. drooping over the mm -hmm. sides. <laughs> I'd love to help. School of wiggetry. <laughs> wiggetry. No, I want to see, I'm not, I wouldn't claim to be a uh, quote unquote a drag mom, but to help other people pursue their their goals. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know where I, like, even if I would have auditioned had I, had you not been in my life, like, you you coached me along so well, like, just out of the kindness of your heart and not to get too sappy, mushy-gushy, but, like, it really did. It helped me out. And you pushed me to do it more, you know? Well, I'm Like, to have the confidence to do it, even, you know? Well, anybody that sees you either in print or in performance, knows that you've got something. And, you know, I love to see people succeed, you know. And, and I like to put, like, a lot of, um, what a lot of people do with their bottom lashes, they'll put them on the way your lashes grow in, which is like this way. I like to go in and do the opposite and just go like this way. So they're swooping this way. Because I, I think it makes them more graphic and more just loud and apparent that they're there. Oh my god, I love it. That is cool, the way you do the bottom lashes. I guess I never realized I that. I've yeah. always done like that. I mean, now that you say it, I noticed it, but I guess I didn't realize that. I thought that was just the way you bought them or something. Mm -hmm. nope. I just completed my look on Mrs. Kasha Davis and it was, as she would say, a hoot and a holler. So if you guys enjoyed it, let us know what you think. Leave us those hateful comments. We're ready for them. Hateful my ass. <laughs> my God on a wheel, darling. I just love this. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to recreate it myself, but, oh, sure but you you're will. so close by that it shouldn't be much of a problem. Kids, if you are out there trying new makeup things, go for it. What did we learn? Practice makes perfect, or at least, you know, something to this uh, level. But we had a wonderful time, and we hope you did too. Thanks so much for tuning in, Miss Wednesday Westwood and Mrs. Kasha Davis. Davis. <laughs> <laughs>